Yep, so everyone, that was 20 seconds. Uh, I'm really happy that you're all here. This, everyone, is my first talk with Utah in the title. I'm very, very <laughs> proud of that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm going to talk about Utah um, cross-CMS collaboration in a competitive market. And uh, I will also be very happy for any discussion at the end. Uh, feel free to hold your questions in until the end, and then we can really do the big stuff. Uh, yeah. Do whatever you want. Yes. Uh, open door, close door. Yeah. So what I'm going to talk about today, these are some, some of the keywords. Uh, we're going to talk about, of course, Drupal, but differentiation, CMSs. We're going to talk about me, uh, the Beatles, cars, lots of stuff. It will be amazing and very interesting. I am Matthias Bolt Lesniak. Uh, I am from outside of Oslo in Norway. Norway is in Europe. If you look at the top <laughs> of the map, that's usually where you find it. Um, can also be at the bottom on some maps, but yeah. I have a wife, I have two kids, and uh, I have been using Typo3 CMS since 2003. Uh, and I am the Typo3 project ambassador. Uh, and before I say anything more about those kind of things, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about why we are all here today. Uh, and first and foremost, this talk is also a thought exercise that asks you to ask yourself questions and think about what I'm talking about. And it's about what does it mean to actually be a free and open source FOSS CMS. I'm going to ask some questions they don't necessarily need answering. And I'm going to outline possible futures that is not necessarily the futures you will choose, but yeah, we all need to think about a future from time to time. But you heard me uh, talking about uh, Typo3 and what the heck is that? Well, Typo3, as I said, is a CMS. It's PHP-based. Mm. It's free and open source. Yep. Uh, it's community-driven. Never heard about that. It's backed by an association. And it has a long history. We're actually 26 years this year. Uh, does this sound similar to some other CMS that you've heard about? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, WordPress, was it? Yeah? Um, anyway, uh, we are actually similar below the surface. Typo3 is different from Drupal, but if you look below the surface, you'll actually notice some things. And these slides I show when I talk at DrupalCon and at Typo3 events. And they're really important because they show our similarity in a very interesting way. If you look at Drupal 10, composer dependencies, all of you know what composer dependencies are or not? Yeah, you know, the code that comes from the outside that Drupal is using. There's 54 of those dependencies in the Drupal core. Typo3 has 98 dependencies. That's because we have a different idea of what actually belongs in the core. There's not, nothing wrong with either solution, but there's a difference in numbers. But the most important number here that we can actually look at is that we have 33 dependencies in common. Hey, look at that. That 66% of Drupal is also in Typo3. Yeah, one way of looking at it anyway. Um, there's a lot of difference above that um, bottom line, but yeah, we have a lot of stuff that we actually share. And that's true with a lot of CMSs today. We were you know, given the same Lego bricks and we built totally different solutions using those same bricks. Yeah, solving the web publishing problem. And as time went on, we got really good at trying to compete against each other. It's like, you know, one of these CMSs looks at the other one and says, oh, they do things differently. We don't like it that way. We're better than them and stuff like that. And at the same time, while we were fighting in our little Lego sand pit or whatever you want to call it, 
things sort of started happening, and it got dark in the sky, and the proprietary and closed source CMSs came and took over. Well, we very often forget that we share so much in the open source world, and that we need to collaborate in order to survive. We need to focus on open source as the selling point for our CMSs, right? Why choose closed source when you can choose open source? And that's why we founded the Open Website Alliance. <laughs> Yoo-hoo! <laughs> I love that picture. <laughs> it has so much meaning to it. Uh, but what is it really that's at the foundation of this Open Website Alliance? Well, it has uh, some words in the charter I'm going to look at those with you. It says the Alliance members seek to promote and defend the rights of open source projects, so beyond themselves, and ultimately aspire to create a better web. That is very nice. The members commit to jointly encourage prospective website owners and developers to always choose open source software over proprietary systems. Okay, that's important because if we as CMSs make people choose open source as the reason, the first choice that they make, we've already converted them to open source, right? then they know why they don't want to use proprietary systems and suddenly we don't have to you know, compete against the Adobe $50 million marketing budget or whatever it is they pay out. Open source in itself is a really good selling point. It gives a lot of stuff and I can talk about that in a different talk, but it's by us as CMS is not saying that, well, you should choose Hyper 3 over Drupal. We say you should choose an open source CMS that fits you. And the Alliance is also here to further openness, trust and quality, and to share best practices. I know you're sort of sitting there and you're asking, well, can we share and still be unique? Won't everyone become us, if we share everything, well, hey, we're open source, right? E everyone can anyway go and look at our code, and we're still different, right? And if you look at our four CMSs, there are members of the Open Website Alliance today. Hmm, are there any better collaborators, <laughs> collaborators than us today? Hmm? You don't actually have to go very far. And you can actually say that we're not very good at collaborating today. That's an honest fact. There are companies out there that are rivals in the marketplace that still collaborate better than us. Yeah, the car industry, for example. These car makers are collaborating on a Linux platform that they write will, if I remember correctly, be the basis for 70 to 80% of the software that you need in a car. And you can still say that Suzuki and Volkswagen are different cars, right? Even though they use the same software. And one of the challenges that we have in the CMS world that is really, really strongly felt is this not invented here concept. Or, well, I call it vanity fear. Vanity fear is that you're so vain that you just have a fear of looking at other CMSs, looking at other CMSs' code, learning from others, becoming better by collaborating. Yes, we're vain. Let me give you a very simple example that nobody will say that they sell a CMS because of its transliteration features. 
what is transliteration? Huh? Well, uh, I'm from Norway. We use transliteration quite a lot. When it comes to URLs, for example, it's taking all of the strange letters and making them into less strange letters, right? Yeah, this is the word for driving instructor. Chauffeur-lare. Mm -hmm. And it becomes chauffeur-lare. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a really simple thing. But the thing is, to do this with all kinds of letters, you need quite a lot of code and lists of information. <sighs> yeah. We all do that, right? With our own piece of code. Fantastic. We spend time on maintaining four different code bases just for doing that. All of those lists of code, all of that, we spend time on our own maintaining. And there's even a fifth symphony uh, library or package that does exactly the same thing uh, and more actually. <sighs> yeah, 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 right? Mm. The Long and Winding Road by the Beatles, the last four words. So why are we doing this? Why are we doing this to ourselves? Why do you choose Drupal? Hmm. Do any of you know how, why you choose Drupal? That's one reason, another reason. That's a really good reason and I've heard that from a lot of people. <laughs> the community in Drupal is great. Did you hear that microphone? The documentation was well organized. That is really interesting. I'll get back to the documentation later, actually. But that's not why customers choose Drupal, is it? It's not why people choose Type C either, right? And what we see here, here's a, a quote from a Danish guy called Jandis, and he says something really important about the CMS market today. He says that it's confusing to be a CMS buyer in the 2024s. Many headless vendors have now dressed up as traditional CMS vendors and added deliveries to their offerings. There is a move to the middle, a blurring of features and offerings. Well, the headless people discovered that just doing headless wasn't what helped the client in the end, so they're moving in that direction. We're moving towards headless because we see that headless can also be useful. And we're ending up in this situation where we're all sort of trying to build the same features. And that makes me ask another important question. Who actually benefits from customers getting the wrong CMS? <sighs> yeah, very often it's, well, people go to open source, they, we don't realize it because we've been in open source for at least a year. I think there were very few in the hall out there earlier who said that they hadn't been using Drupal for less than a year, right? But we know what open source is, and we know that Drupal is not open source. But many people who don't know that, they approach CMSs as one single thing. They see open source as one single thing. And I've heard this multiple times. I tried open source once. It didn't work. Yeah, open source failed me. We're all selling the same features. We're all open source. We're all hurting from 
this fight that we're having, this battle to do all of the same things. People look at open source as a monolith. And I say that that can destroy us. If every CMS strives to have every feature that every other CMS does, then no CMS will have a USP, a unique selling point. What will be the importance of choosing Drupal over Type C or WordPress or even Adobe? Where do we position ourselves? How do we get away from this chase against feature parity? When what we might actually need is to be CMSs that solve people's concrete problems. Can we try to do everything and still succeed? Here's a quote from me because I couldn't find any good quote on the <laughs> internet. <laughs> yeah. You know, we are unique only to the degree that we understand and respect our differences, right? When did you last look at another CMS? Okay, I was at the Dries note earlier and the man on the stage, don't know what he's called, mentioned this thing about cache tags and he hadn't heard about a CMS that also has cache tags. And I looked back in my commit history and, and back there and I think Typo3 has also had cache tags for the last 15 years. Well, I guess you don't always choose a CMS based on cache tags, right? But being from Typo3, I can honestly say that I know very, very little about Drupal. I didn't know that Drupal had cache tags until today. Yes, now you know that Typo3 has them too, but this is the situation we're living in. We're we're trying to choose the right CMS and we're recommending one or the other without actually knowing what's good in the other CMSs. We don't know our own weaknesses because we don't know what other CMSs are better at. I can't today say that someone should choose Typo3 over Drupal because I don't know what the real USPs of Drupal are compared to Typo3, even though we are both open source systems. That is quite striking, I find. And we see things with, you know, I spoke to someone at a university not long ago who said that, well, they were using Drupal for some websites and then they were using WordPress for some other websites because some people need just blogs and other people need what Drupal can give them. And it's very interesting. Uh, I am no judge of what's the right choice for what solution, but yeah, maybe there is a difference between us. Do we always need to use the CMS that we know best? Or are we choosing it because it is the only CMS that we know? And then back to the Open Website Alliance. What if we can get to a stage where we can understand and respect our differences and present a united front? Then we need to know each other better too because we have to help our clients make the good choices of, well, today you might need WordPress, tomorrow you might need Drupal. Who knows? And is this really about competing against each other. No, it's ex about competing with each other. Another nice quote, not from me. Competition should not be for a share of the market, but to expand the market, right? We're not here to take market shares from each other. We're here to expand the open source CMS market. That is where we want to go. But that requires some difficult thinking. It requires that we know more about each other. 
that can be challenging. And as we know with the vanity fears, we very often are fearful of going away from what we know. At the same time, as going away from something we know might actually save us time and give us time to focus on these features that are really going to sell Drupal in the future. I have a challenge to you, Drupal people. I've chosen a benign challenge, but still I know that there is differences of opinion here. My point is not to give an answer, but to give an example of one of these choices. As far as I know, documentation in Drupal is today maintained within Drupal. Mm -hmm. I've heard good reasons for that. In type of three, we do it differently. Um, and there's a guy called Yap. He's from PHP Documenter. He made a flexible PHP-based documentation rendering package. It can take anything in, like markdown or restructured text or whatever you throw at it. And then it can spit out anything else that you want. It can do HTML, LaTeX, it can do, well, it can even communicate with a database and put content into a CMS if you want to. The strength of the system is, well, you can work with different versions of your documentation because if it's in Markdown or restructured text, it's in Git. So you can have different versions of your documentation in different branches. And if you have a change that covers multiple different versions, you can just merge it into whichever branch you want. And you can work with languages in the same way. You can easily say, see changes to the documentation, stuff like that. Well, it's a good idea. We're using it in type of three. That's why I'm mentioning it here. And most importantly though, this renderer is not the usual sort of restructured text renderers things. It's actually based in PHP, which means that everyone who uses a PHP based CMS can use it. It's a collaboration project between PHP documenter Symfony. You've heard about Symfony, right? It's also used in Drupal. It's most of those 66% of the Drupal core that are common in with type of three doctrine and type of three. We've collaborated about that for us in type of three. It's reduced the rendering time for our core documentation from 20 minutes to a minute or something like that. So it's also blazingly fast. And Yop says that he will be happy to help any project migrate to this collaboration project. And Yop works for PHP documenter. So he's not in type of three. That's an example of one of these questions where maybe working together can save time, but it's a difficult question because you also have to choose not to use Drupal for something. Who knows? I'm not going to say what the right answer is here, but I think the question is important. And we're going to see many of these kind of questions coming to us in the future where we have to choose between what we love and what we now know and what might actually make it possible for our project to focus our, our time on becoming better. Another quote, advances are made by answering questions. Right? But discoveries are made by questioning answers. And we need to do that. We need to question not just how we're going to do things, but why we're doing it. Because if we say that openness, open source is our primary strength as projects, then closed is also the weakest link. Good night. Thank you. Any questions, comments, ideas, uh, verbal attack?
Well, I, uh, let me tell you, I would choose Joomla because Wix is a closed source proprietary system, although it's, yes, allegedly based on WordPress, but it's being kept closed. I would always make the choice first of choosing open source, and then I would go and see who can actually give me the best results. Is there a local agency that is an expert on the type of business that I have? Is there a CMS system that has the features that I need for what I'm going to do? Joomla are very clear on one thing, for example. They do not do multi-site. That's an honest choice that they have made, that that's not something they want to focus on. Maybe that has pros and it has cons too, but yeah. So the Open Website Alliance was founded to promote open source and promote best practices. Uh, and it's a leadership level organization, which means that the leadership of the different community organizations between the CMSs come together and talk. I think that is an important starting point in understanding each other. Uh, that I hope will also promote collaboration between the different projects. Importantly, the Open Website Alliance, we work with policy in the way of law and legislation and those kind of things like in the EU and the US, but we do not decide policy for the CMSs. We don't decide what you know, libraries Drupal is going to use. But by talking together and seeing what we can do together, what will save us time, like with the documentation rendering, that saves time for Symfony and Piper 3 for our documentation rendering. Well, maybe other CMSs can also save time by migrating to that one. And if you do not move to that one, well, then my request is that you make a cons conscious choice of are we going to keep this as something we build ourselves or are we going to collaborate collaborate with other open source vendors to save time and make something that's even better together. Jam? The, um, the Wix open website alliance happened partially as a result of two things. Um, clearly Wix had this uh, mandatory requirement to be a community and it's partly as um, a response to a real market need and a market need.
Ja, the, the exactly. U UX is, is a weak point often for, for open source, but it also shows that we often lack time. Uh, you know, we, we're very happy to build everything ourselves, but one example that I didn't include in the presentation, but that is important is, for example, the Gutenberg project and the collaboration between WordPress and Drupal on a UX initiative, which Gutenberg is. Uh, and that shows that, well, Drupal can be Drupal and use something from WordPress, and it w doesn't make Drupal worse, right? It makes Drupal better because we I don't know, I read somewhere that it was 5,000 hours spent in actually developing the Gutenberg solution for, uh, for WordPress. Well, yeah, if, if you use that in Drupal and it is good for your clients, you've suddenly saved 5,000 hours. That's true. Uh, I want to hear from you as well. Yeah. Uh, I was There are many levels that we can collaborate in the open source community. The Open Website Alliance is specifically for free and open source content management systems. They don't have to be PHP based, but they have to be free and open source. That is one level that we can collaborate on. I think that content management has some challenges in common uh, that we need to talk about. But also one of the things that we learned working with the European Union uh, with the uh, Cyber Resilience Act was that there's a lot that we can do with our friends in other open source projects more generally. But one specific thing that is a benefit of the CMS communities is that we actually work closely with a lot of people from the small to medium sized businesses. Uh, if you're from Red Hat, for example, you probably don't talk to a lot of small businesses. Uh, but we do. So suddenly, as the Open Website Alliance, we represent more than 50% of all websites in the European Union. And we can talk to each and every one of those by talking to our agencies, and then the agencies talk to their members. That's just you know one skip. Uh, running Apache on your server is much more remote much more, much further removed from uh, from the actual end business that is benefiting from it. So we can speak in a different way and therefore benefit the entire open source community. The shoemaker's children uh, usually walk uh, bare feet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, <laughs> uh, it's being built at the at the moment. We have a. But you wouldn't believe that Falcon has the shoemaker's children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it was everyone agreed that it should be static HTML. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's there might be other ways to hack it, but anyway, don't try. Um, <laughs> yes.
and I mean, th we can also do more in educating our customers about their needs or make them better at you know describing their needs uh, because I mean, all of you have probably been in projects with clients who said they needed something, but it turns out after you've delivered the finished site that what they actually needed was was something else. There's another project with that, the the Drupalism project, which looks at you know how do we actually describe the features or, or what words do we use to describe our, our CMS? I mean, uh, just look at yeah, modules in Drupal is like a plugin in WordPress, but it's just a part of an extension in Piper Vue. Yeah. You know, it, yeah, we can get lost just on that level. Yeah, I think that's true. And I very often speak about a, a three-stage rocket when you sell uh, your CMS today. Uh, you start by getting the, uh, the client to understand that the right choice is open source, no matter what. Then the client needs to either choose a CMS or choose, you know, find their, their needs and then choose a, a CMS. And then the place where the real competition happens in the open source marketplace today, from my perspective, is actually agency expertise. You might choose an agency because they have an expertise in the area that you work, and that can be more important even than you know, the choice of CMS because you know, working with the right people uh, can do a lot with, with a inferior product. Point thoughts? No, good. Uh, ending three minutes early. No, two, three, three minutes early. Very good. Thank you.